Hopefully this works. Crashed. Now let's see the next error. Okay, so the problem is we have test driven development <clears throat> but we are using crash driven development today <laughs> <laughs> and as i have mentioned the one line that i want to say in hindi is jitna hi mushkil hota hai is duniya mein sacha pyar dhoondna usse zyada mushkil hai mere liye anur ke sath ye video banana humne itni koshish kari hai <laughs> back and forth back and forth and i'm really happy finally a video ban raha hai so yeah with that <laughs> <laughs> time matching was so difficult because we both worked probably like 10 to 12 hours a day so it is hard all right so hey everyone this is me rachit jain and welcome to it another video this is a very special video i have invited singh in usa he is a very famous youtuber like he is an indian student who went to america and he has he has been doing phenomenal work on youtube and even as a software engineer and in this particular video i'll be interviewing him in one of the other videos he has interviewed me which is on his channel you can check that out but in this video i'll be testing his software engineering skills especially what are his skills as an android developer so i'll be asking him not any data structure algorithm problems but i'll be giving him an app that he has to make within 30 to 40 minutes so it will be really tough because the time constraints are going to make it really like difficult for him to make a working app so with that hanur i want you to introduce yourself to my audience once yeah sunlight actually ruined uh yeah let me so hello everyone finally got an invite from rachit thank you so much for inviting me and so excited to you know uh, give a test regarding my android abilities and my data structure knowledge is not the best like easy level because i wasn't supposed to be tested upon that i mainly showed my android abilities like activity life cycle and so on so please ask feel free to ask anything <laughs> yeah so awesome man uh, let's uh, like i have shared a google doc with you and i request you to share your screen so that the viewers can also sure. see that awesome so now um, so hanur i will not waste more of your time and the overall agenda is i want you to build an android app which is nothing but a quiz app that i want you to build mm-hmm. and um, what i expect is basically you make a backend call to an api which i will share with you and the response mm-hmm. of the api it will look something like this you have a key status which will show whether it's success or error or any something like that and if it's successful then you get all the questions as an array in json response each entry in the questions is having title options and answer and using this response i want you to build an android app in which the user can basically play around the quiz app select whatever options they feel is the right answer and at the end i want you to show a simple score of how many like if it if there were 10 questions i want you to show 5 of 10 were correct something like that sounds good yes sounds great so uh, just to be sure so i will be uh, i will be tested more upon my api knowledge or the ui so what should i prioritize because you have given me only 30 minutes so i have to first of all think about the time management that's most important right so my expectation from you is to show your speed in building an android app and mm-hmm. later on as like we might extend a bit here and there probably 10 or 15 minutes but the overall intent is to basically see you write some code and the main priority would like also be about how you answer the you know follow up questions that i'll be asking you sure sounds great so uh, the breakdown will be the data has basically one string one list and then another string so uh, that's pretty easy to parse and uh, now talking about the ui let me quickly open android studio so let's create a new project so and what about the ui design pattern do you want me to be in like mvc mvp mvvm i can make in any design pattern or you can so for a, for a simple activity like quiz app here is my question to you what do you feel would be suitable in this situation i think let's go for the simple mvc pattern yeah that's not like because like the design patterns definitely help in um keeping the code maintainable but if you're just making the app from the scratch uh, from scratch so let's just keep it simple and we see right so uh so i'm going to time manage in a way that i'll put uh, 15 minutes for ui and 15 minutes for backend so let's plan the ui first and time 
starts now, right? Okay, I hope right. you have started it somewhere. Awesome. Okay, so the Android project is getting set up. And this is M1 Mac, by the way. It's pretty fast for Android development too. I love it so far. And oh, so I have I have actually I have actually seen few of my friends struggle with autocomplete features on M1 Mac. <laughs> that actually <laughs> that actually has been me. I, it did happen, but it's only like one percent of the time. So okay, so let's plan the UI. So wait, so let's go to the main activity. And here, uh, what I'm gonna do is let's think about two buttons first. So one can be a result button. Let's go for that. Do you want to uh, zoom in a bit on the sure. mobile okay. users will be like, uh, you are not thinking about us. Yeah. But they're shooting videos and uploading them on YouTube. You do not care. Yeah. Thankfully, autocomplete is working today on M1 Mac. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so I'm constraining this button to top to top and then add some margins. Let's say margin top 20 dp. No, it's too less. Let's go for 50. And then margin start. So start is by the way left. So Android in the, its API recommends us to use start rather than left. So margin start means margin left. Got so, it. Yeah. And now let's go with the next button. So button two. So this will be results. Yeah, I forgot to label it. Let's add some text. Right. It will be uh, questions. And then. Or you can say start quiz. Let's keep keep it. Or you, because you haven't pro provided me any design, so I'm just going with what I feel like. Exactly. Very yeah. <laughs> so first button done. Second button. Let's add text. It will be results page, and then uh, next will be margin. Uh, just feel free to write code, and I am I'm adding some commentary for the audience. All right. Sure. Okay. You you do it. Yeah. I'll yeah. Just feel so uh, so far i feel that this video can actually also be a good tutorial for people to see how android development is done and as you can see like he currently has one button which has a text of start quiz and he has given all those margin start and top and all those things and he can see the uh, result that how it will be looking on the right side it's very small so obviously you can't see it very clearly but yeah you get the overall gist of that and I myself have been doing Android development. Like I did it in uh, probably third year of my college. And I also have it on Play Store. Bunkometer is the app name. And we have spent around three minutes. Three minutes. Okay, I'm on time. And I'm just, and I'm just, and I'm just like talking about time just to make you more nervous. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know the margin top didn't get added. I don't know why. Okay, let's do this. Let's, let's, let's add IDs as well. ID little button uh, start is BT for button so button results. So you can see that Amber Mac is not not perfect. It's like I think it's it's amazing, but sometimes autocomplete did give me issue here once again. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> ID is BT start quiz. Okay. All right. So I'm assuming the next thing that he will be do doing is basically have some on click listeners. Sure. So, so far what we have achieved is we have created a page. So let's, let me run the app as well, if you like. So we have just two buttons. So what I'm going to do is now create another activity for a container so that, that because like fragment is recommended to be used. So I'm going to create a container. I don't know why it's slow. I think it's because of zoom call. Uh, usually it's pretty fast when zoom is not connected. Anyways. Also, this is production. Things always mess up in production. Yeah, that is true. That is absolutely true. <laughs> so what we're going to do is as soon as we click the questions button or start quiz button, we're going to mm -hmm. launch this container activity and this container will switch from one question to other question for quizzes. All right. And do you plan to use multiple activities for that or? No, uh, multiple fragments, but not but awesome. multiple activities. I think we can yeah. do it in the same fragment, but let's see. Let's see. I think every developer can... Uh, relate to this like the most boring task is to write the import statements for something that you want to use and it's really awesome if autocomplete works over there so now i'm setting the on click listener and i'm going to choose to use the lambda expression for it so i'm going to do the magic so this much i think these are like five lines of code will decrease to only two cool lambda expression 
So now let's right. add, uh, let's launch this container activity. So I already remember how to do intents because Android developer use a lot of intents. So let's do that. Intent equals to new intent. And in every intent we pass this and we want to launch container activity. So basically on the, like it's very similar to how JavaScript and you know, how, how we work in JavaScript. Like you created the design, the front end, and then like you are getting access to the buttons and then on click, you are setting on click listeners and what you want to do with that. Yep, that's right. So now I'm creating a frame layout where we can switch one fragment and we can just replace frame layout with another fragment. So let's do all the constraint. Now let's add an ID. Because it because we are constraining it from top left bottom right, so right. I'm gonna make the width zero dp right. and height zero dp because it's gonna stretch all the way to the full screen. Got it. Yeah, it's like match parent for relative layout. So just wanted to explain that. But anyways, let's move forward. Uh, so frame layout is done. Now we need fragments for the quiz. So let's create new fragment. Empty fragment blank. Yeah. So let's call it a questions fragment. Right. This is the real lead, right? Yeah, most important one. So, okay, so it's done. Uh, there's like a lot of garbage stuff or, or like housekeeping stuff we don't need yeah. here. I'm just delete it. Yeah, okay, so now let's make the UI for the fragment. And now uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, it's it's frame layout. I'm gonna convert it to constraint layout. So we need questions. So it should be great world. So can you tell me out of the quiz we can select only one answer or multiple answers? There's always one answer. Okay, okay, because like in in IDJ exams, you know. So okay, so I'm gonna create a radio button. So that's exactly a radio. radio button radio. will work over here. Yeah, radio group, uh, rap content, rap content, and let's create inside radio buttons. I'll be one of the content content. Let's call it ID. I'll be one. I'll be one radio button one. And then close it. So we need four radio buttons. Mm -hmm. I don't know why radio group didn't get imported. I need to look for example for radio group, but anyways, in the no meantime, problem. Yeah. And I'm, I have access to Stack Overflow, right? I have for your permission for that. Yeah, yeah. Feel free to search, like use Google. Okay. All right. So you have four radio buttons on the screen. Okay, radio group is not important. Okay, I need. I didn't give constraints. So constrained. Top, top off. Okay, let's create the text view first before that text view. For the question, right? Yeah. This is gonna be a TV question. This is set. Let's write a sample text to see if it's visible. The text could be your name, anything. Uh, let's see, it is visible. Let's add some margin, margin top 20 dp. It didn't show up. I think constraint top to top. Oh, yeah, I didn't add constraint top to top. Okay, now it showed up. Let's make it like 100 dB of margin. Yeah. And then let's make this radio group right. below up to bottom of that TV. Oh, this is strange. Let me see an example. You also have top of a parent, right? You can oh yeah, you're right. Oh, thanks for pointing it out. Yes. Yeah, so you fixed it. Thanks. <laughs> cool. Let's see what's the error message here. The view cannot be constrained horizontally. Oh yes. So there are missing constraints. That's the error. So let's do a uh, constraints start to start off. Parent. And and let's do let's remove the end constraint. Let's keep it on the left. And then I'm going to add margin start. Can you center this horizontally on the viewport? This options? Yeah. 
Oh, that'll look weird, but I can center it. Okay. Usually it's on the left side, the constraint. End to end of end. And then let's remove the margin. So it looks something like this. It is weird, but let's let's test it out now. Before that, we need to launch it. So in the container activity, what we're gonna do is we're gonna launch the fragment. Okay, launch fragment. Oh, it already completed activities. Let's see. See, th these pages are not open. You can see that I'm creating first time. <laughs> Otherwise, you don't have it in purple. But anyways, right. Uh, public void launch fragment. I also want to request you to you know zoom in again on the screen a bit. Thanks. I need to pass the fragment name. Let's see if there are better examples. Yes, this is better because it's creating an object of the fragment. This is much better. And what I'm going to do is replace this with this one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to accept this as a fragment. Yep. And then get activity. Why it's not importing? Let's just directly, we don't need to call a method. Like, if I let directly, well, let me try directly first. So the fragment name is questions fragment. Then get activity. Next. This, yeah, found it. This is, this works. Now the idea is uh, at fragment, come on, fragment. Oh, frame layout, yeah, frame layout. We can replace with this fragment. Let's see if this works, then we'll convert it to method. And first, let me check if I am launching. So uh, from the main activity, we are launching the uh, container activity and container activity is indeed launching this and this should be launched on on create let's see if it, if it works it should work what is this tag find this fragment so uh what what we're doing is where, where is find dot find, replace line 20. oh yes we don't need it actually because we don't have tags for fragments we don't need it so we can just keep keep it simple this much thanks was for it, it was it like something uh like so that later on if you want to retrieve a fragment by its stack something yeah uh, yeah. yeah so you, you can when you create a fragment you can add a tag to it so later on you can do find fragment by tag so Got can, it. Yeah, associate with it okay it did launch start quiz okay so it's working right option one two three before i didn't add in text now what we have to do is get these questions from an api right yeah, let me simplify this. Uh, this looks very messy. So let me just convert this into a method. Now I'm going to call method here, launch, and I can call it new questions fragment. Yeah, so this, this looks cleaner. And now anyways, now let's create three folders. So this will be view. I'm going to move all these to view controller so controller should be created here and now there are three packages i'm going to replace this to view i mean move it to view and it should not create duplicate it should refactor i don't know why it was creating duplicate i don't know why this is so strange this should be let me see if this got this got refactor so right. this is referring it as view dot fragment as compared to dot fragment so i can delete right. these three this is so crazy this is really buggy here it's it shouldn't be right. this buggy I did move it. it. It got moved, but it still still shows shows outside, and it doesn't even show that it's deleted. And it's showing in red on the screen, though, right? That question. Yeah, it it's not deleted. It has to project. So it was moved correctly, right? But it didn't refresh on the side. That's the bug. Android Studio has the bug. Let's go to GitHub issues. <laughs> it's just a bug on M1 Mac, so it's not ready. Anyways, let's create a new model. So we're gonna create a Java class for question. So that's what I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be retrieving for your from your API. So the question class will have 
three fields. Let's go back to the Google Doc, which you sent. So it's going to have a string, string list, and then another string. String title, then string list. No, then it will be string answer. Then list string options. Right. Let's create it. Uh, let's create keep it all public so that it's easy. But no, we shouldn't create uh, keep it public. Let's create the garrison setters. So this is a shortcut and it creates garrison and setters like a like a snap. Or right. <laughs> now let's we we need a constructor. So the constructor is here. Let me increase the font size again. Okay. Constructor done. Now let's create controller. That'll be a service. We can call it questions API or something. But uh, before that, let's create a mock before testing that. So I'll create three functions. One will be public void get get questions from the API. Let's say that's what we need. So what I'm going to create is uh, what, what I'm going to do is create a list, a mock list. So list will be of question, questions, and then new array list. And then here I'm going to add some, some mock data, dot add new question. And then here we can add, you know, uh, like question could be, like I'll get the questions of course from the API. Let's add like what's your name list. And then it will have options like A, B, four options, D. So let's see if this works. There's an error. Okay, there's, there's a need of another parentheses. <laughs> yes, no errors now. So let's add like two to three questions uh, and then make it like, this can be like question two to test. Once this works, we can easily convert it to the API call. Now, what I'm gonna do is return this list of questions. So return question list. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is we can go to questions fragment. And here we're going to uh, go through the list. So let's get, get the list first. List. Questions. Let's do question service. Let's make convert that into a static method. Right. Also, uh, one thing that I also remember is like when you are writing in that inflator view, right? You generally hold that view object and then you do all sort of, you know, uh, manipulations on, on that, right? And then finally you return the modified view. Modified view. In... No, we usually, we, we can do that. We first inflate it and we modify it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We find it, we can modify it. We can uh, set text, get text, whatever you want. Right, that's right. right. I'm assuming that's what we'll be doing, right? We'll, yeah, be, storing that, planning, yeah. we'll be storing the returned object from inflate in some object and then we'll be playing around with it and returning that at the end. Yeah. And actually, we, should, we shouldn't be writing code in on create view. We should be doing it on view created. So thanks for pointing it out. Uh, we will I'll override another method called on view created. So this is when the view is created. So after the super, because like you cannot write any code after return statement. So right. we're doing all, all that here. Yeah. So here, question service dot get questions. So we have all the questions here. This could be easily replaced by an API call. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is uh, now we're going to use the stuff in the UI we have and call them here. Uh, in fact, this, this is the UI. Let's split it. Split vertically so that we can see it on both sides. And then just keep the fragment here. Yep. So this is a fragment. These are the these are the IDs we have visible. Right. So what I'm, what I can do is as soon as we have a list, we can 
do set text so tv question okay so i have to create variables for all of these so private text view and tv question then it will be three four and then we're going to do tv question we have to initialize as well right let's another method public void initialize so you can call it here the top and then it will be tv question equals to find dot find this is really cool with the android studio like the auto complete features and you know the refactoring stuff is really smooth yeah i love it too i think in xcode there are not that many features but in jetbrains so this is like a software yeah, jetbrains yeah. jetbrains is like really famous for it's like well maintained ids lots of cool yeah. features yeah but what about you do you have these cool features in your javascript i mean in yeah any... yeah so so basically uh, jetbrains also has webstorm uh for javascript i've used but, it yeah i use i use intellij because intellij also has a yeah but i i use vs so. code vs code is also really cool and i don't want to move from vs code to any other editor for now oh right. it's very lightweight also mm -hmm. so okay so we have initialized all of these now let's do the set text part but now what i'm going to do is uh, tv question dot next questions dot we need an index here right. so we need a for loop here but let's do the first one for now right do for, for testing purposes and get title and then we're going to do rb no let's do that later and let's do rb1 let's set text and then to the get options dot get zero and now it will be one one two three so these are like option one two three four we're setting right. in rb1 rb2 so let's see if this much code works and then let's proceed let's run it first go with the mock data then let's see if we have time for that okay it crashed so that's an expectation that happens all <laughs> the time let's see run where is the error set text on a null reference so it's saying that uh let me close this as well so it was not able to find tv question basically i did initialize it yeah but i think there's a bug on line 60 right 60 oh yes you're right oh you found it before me this should be tv question i did was it tv question before it was bt start quiz yeah. oh yes thanks i was just in, you're you're faster than me I I I wrote the wrong ID here, right? Because that does not exist on that particular screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, let's test it out now. Okay, it launched. Yes, A B C D is here. Now we need a next button that will launch the next question. So below it, we can create a button. We are very close to the end, not really, but I have to say that to be hopeful. <laughs> split, and then we're gonna P. Oh, I didn't create any ID for this radio group, so let's create it. Mm -hmm. R B group makes sense. It's slow. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> It's only fast. It's just the RAM limitation. Now I realize that I should have gotten the MacBook with more RAM. <laughs> okay, so now let's add a text here. It can be called next question. Let's add some margin as well. Twenty dp. 
okay so now this is out of the way now we can create a loop so let's create a counter right let's create in the service that will be more organized uh it will be int counter equals zero so whenever we start the app the counter will be zero then we'll right. keep on using it so let's go to the questions fragment and then let's create a for loop here and after initializing it once we have the data it'll be for loop uh starting from zero till no no it should be i don't think we need a for loop we do but i mean let me let me visualize it so the moment we click the next button we will get the next data so what we need to do is the moment we launch the app we need the first index data but next time we click the button so it will be let me initialize that button as well so Go ahead. button it could be called bt next next question yep okay so now next we need to we initialize it and now after initializing it we need something here bt next dot set on click nester new view dot and now let's use the lambda magic to reduce the lines of code and now we gonna to uh get the index uh, i mean we already know the index so we need to set the next questions so we're going to do set questions and get counter okay i need to do service dot so question service dot counter so i'll replace this everywhere Right, and what we're going to do is increase the counter after after setting first time. So question service dot counter plus plus, and then do the same here as well. Got it. Let me yeah. So let th if this works, we are very close to the end. So let me go to question service. Uh, yes, we have we have three questions, so it should at least work till index two. So. Right. Three questions should be. Should and then be the app will crash. I don't think so this time, but I mean, let's see. Let's. See. I am hopeful it shouldn't crash. Okay, start quiz. So first question next. Yes, it is working. Question two is here next. Okay, now the thing is we need to deselect the option because it it, it still still shows as being selected. So we need to do some of the housekeeping stuff, but. Let's let's do the logic first. So, what we're gonna do is, before incrementing, if the counter is double equal to the last index of the list, so we're gonna do is question list is questions dot size. Minus one. So let's say the list is of size three. So if this is two and the counter is already two, then we are not going to increment it, and we're going to show results. So we launch the results page, and for that I need to create a new fragment, new fragment blank. So this could be called results fragment. Let's remove the housekeeping stuff again. This boring stuff. For now, let's just keep a text here so that I can check if the if the result is being launched. Results are here. Okay. Now let's launch it in the questions fragment. So let's let's launch it, and you're gonna copy the code from main container activity, whatever you, we used. Uh, Launch. Let's see if it works. This this will not work. This dot get activity dot yes. So what we're gonna what we're doing is from the fragment we're getting the reference to the activity and from that we're switching the fragment and here I can I get up to the same frame layout again and here what we launch. Fragment and here I'm gonna call it new results. So I'm gonna change it to results fragment. 
because I, mean, I forgot to rename it properly. Right. So let's test it out. And if it works, then it's just like everything is piece of cake from there. Like comparison and sure is that. So how do you communicate data between multiple fragments? So between multiple fragments, um, we have this bundles here. So whenever we launch new fragment, we can add stuff to bundle. It's like hash map. So, or you can say shared preferences. I mean, to to keep it simple, it's like hash map. So, in bundles, you can do bundle dot okay. key like key x value. So we can we can okay. do that. But for this scope of the app, let's keep things simple because I have limited time. So this is doing okay. Results are here, and if you notice one thing, it showed results after index two. So I have to change that. So it shouldn't have been size minus one. I did a mistake in my logic. So it just should be size, not size minus one. So it shows results in advance. So now, uh, since we are going to the results page, now we need to compare and send data to the results page. Right. Yeah, so, so basically all I want you to do, like, uh, like I have, so right now I will just give you a heads up. So I have seen like you are able to write new activities. You know how fragments work. I am sure you understand what is the benefit of fragments and I'm, expecting that obviously like when you have a full page and when you want only part of that view page to change with some other component you basically use fragments over there and replace the whole component right so i have seen how you write code i liked how you are using the initialize <coughs> function and passing in the view to do all the you know bookkeeping stuff over there so overall i am happy with all those things i know that for uh sg1 position you are if I, if I give you task and I, if I give you clear position, like this is what I want. If I give you breakdown task, I'm sure that I can count on you in basically like, I know that you will complete that and build whatever I want you to build. Wow. Thank you now, but I can definitely, let me complete it. Let me complete the results page. So in the results page, we need to, so let's do the comparison, the results page. I can send data from one fragment to the other. So what I, what I need to do is. Yes. So basically right now we can uh, stop once you basically compute the score and send it to the final results page and we can display the results over there and that's it. We can end like enhancing the app in based of looks or, you know, calling the actual API. We can do all those parts later, but I just want you to, you know, compute the score and send it to another fragment. That's what I'm interested sure. in. Sure. So let's Google. Uh, I don't remember how to send data from one fragment out of my mind, but let's do it. Send data from fragment to fragment let's see so yeah bundles as i told you so what we're going to do is add bundle and then set arguments this is pretty simple and then when we launch that we, we're going to access it so here i'm going to come on so after that, that fragment instance is already there you can create a new bundle and here i'm going to create all the answers uh so the tricky part is we need to send, we don't know the, how many questions are there, but for now let's assume there are only three questions. We can, we can change it later on with the loop. So we can do question one, Q1, and the answer will be uh, the RB, RB, no, it should be, we need to get the answer with the chosen answer from the radio button and we need to store it in a list. For that, I need to get data from the selected radio button. So let's add quickly. So radio group get checked radio button. So if we can get that, I'll be able to get the text out of it or the option out of exactly. it. Exactly. So let's see how, how they do it. So radio button that get checked radio button ID. So once you have the ID, you have the radio button and then you can get anything out of it. So what we can, we can do this. So let's, so after we have, uh, after we select incremented the counter and uh, so after we select increment the counter, yeah, that means you have already selected it. So after one option is selected, we can do this. So I have to initialize radio group as well now. I didn't do that. RD group. Oh yeah, <laughs> you remember more <laughs> RB group, yep. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so RB ID, RB group. I did initialize. Oh, it's radio called radio. Radio group. 
So now we have the ID. We're going to do view radio group. Sorry, radio group dot find view by ID. And we have the radio button that is selected. Now we can just keep on storing in a list. So let's create another list here. List string answers. And let's initialize it here and initialize. Answers equals to new array list, and then we're gonna add it. Like, can't we do uh, like right now? We already have access to the current question, right? Yeah, so can't we just co compute the score over here itself? We can, yeah, we can here, we can do here, but you wanted to show in a different fragment. So I was thinking we could send the data and compute it in a different fragment because you remember single responsibility principle. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, of course, so that's, I mean, we can do it here, but I was like, let's store but the it, answer. Actually, it also makes sense to store these answers because the next question for a user using this app would be like, okay, what questions did I make wrong? Like what questions were wrong? Right, so it's good that if you are storing all the answers and then passing that to another fragment, makes sense. Yep. Mm -hmm. So answers dot add radio button dot get text. How to get text from radio button? This is confusing. So this is of type view. Okay, yes, I need to cast it to radio button. Yeah, found it. See, your text is here, and now I'm adding it here. So now once we are storing it here and now next time we are adding it here. So all the answers are stored here. Now let's do a check if answers are getting stored properly before we click the next button before so that the app doesn't crash. So let me, let me pass it here, the answers. The problem is I have to, it's a, it's a, it's it's like a hash map. I need to convert the list to string again and then convert it back in string. This is complicated. Let's see how to send list store list in bundle. Okay, so basically you are saying the value can all only be a string. Oh yeah, this 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 this. I remember. Put string. It should work. Come on. Oh, I need array list here. Okay. Let's do my list. Yes. So now the data is currently being sent to that. So let's do a toast on the results fragment to see if the data is currently coming or not. So the moment we have a view created, so I need to override that as well. Override methods and then on view created. And then let's do a toast. Get dot get application context and then here we're gonna do the bundle so bundle is here so saved dot yes found it and now we need the key so i did i think the key was let me see let's go back q1 oh wow you have great memory <laughs> and then uh we will get the answers here and now let's Let's store this in a list, array list. And let's put it here. Dot answer dot to string. Okay, so now if this works, then it's just all about setting the results correctly and we all set. Basically you are passing each selected answer for the user, right? You are that's what you're going to toast. Yep. Yeah. Really confusing if we just crashed. Okay, let's see where I messed up. So null reference radio button dot get text. So this button ID somehow this ID is not returning the selected one. I think I need to do it in uh, on check. I think I did the mistake when the radio button is checked, then I have to do it. Set on check change listener. Correct. On check change listener. Okay, so let's do the Lambda magic again. And now we have the checked ID here and group here. So we have to do all of this 
here. Checked ID is also, we already have the check ID. Correct. We don't have to find the check ID then. Correct. The button which is selected and add. So every nine, time it is six, selected. 966 should use group, right? Yeah, it is correct. Really. Oh, this group. You're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> and now what, what else I have to do is I have to, the moment you uh, select, so one time you selected it, wait, this is, this this doesn't, it's not supposed to be here. And yeah, that's correct. And also the moment we select it, we have to deselect on the next page. So the moment I click the next button, this would be a next button click nested. So I should set all the RB buttons unchecked. Right. That's fine. Like you can leave it for now. Okay, let's okay, let's leave it for now. Okay. Let's just go to concentrate on result. You're right. <laughs> let's see. Hopefully this works. Crashed. Now let's see the next error. Okay, so the problem is we have test driven development, <clears throat> but we are using crash driven development today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but then we shouldn't let the counter increase so counter shouldn't increase what's the error the counter counter uh, is like more than the list so this should increase only else not increase I forgot because launch fragment is not a return statement right yeah so I mean, launch fragment is gonna go to the new fragment, and it's it shouldn't execute this, but still, let's see. No, but it will execute it, and uh, there is no null point, like there is no exception in line eighty. Like you're incrementing the counter. The problem is when you're trying to do line seventy one. So hmm. somehow there is still problem. I feel. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, so that's not the issue. That's, we have to debug through it. Okay, uh, line 70. So what's happening is uh, every time we click it, it is getting it. So we shouldn't get it if if this is equal to size. So this if statement, all we have to do is just move this code below. Right, makes sense, right? But shouldn't that be in else, like all this, like, like I'm saying, I'm thinking launch fragment. It's not a return statement, right? It is kind of. I think it it will launch to it will launch new fragment. And it will launch new fragment, but the rest of the thing will also execute. I feel like oh. let's see because you're not returning a function, right? Okay. Yeah, you're right. It's still crashed. Yeah. So I think I should return here. Launch fragment if you yeah exactly put a return over here. Earlier it was working. I'm just confused. So crazy. <laughs> really, oh yeah, this is a different error. Thank God, <laughs> different error. So null objection. Okay, so this we didn't get. I did pass it. Put string set arguments and then. Uh -huh. So hey everyone, as you can see, there is a sudden change in the background as well as our clothes and uh, how programming works. Like whenever we are giving estimates, we think something will happen. It doesn't happen always. And this is also kind of a fun video. So we are meeting yet again, like in that particular time, we were not able to finish things off. We did make good, good progress, but yeah, this is how it works. But yeah, here we are with uh, the second part kind of video and uh, we'll be completing the app and then i have few follow-up questions with hanul and that's what this is all about sounds good yep Excited. Awesome. so let me first show you the issue that i was personally facing so last time i was trying to show the data using bundles but then i did some research and found out that in fragments we should use arguments but in activities we can use bundles so now i am sending the data from questions fragment to results fragment through bundles now. I can show you, uh, actually not through bundles, but arguments now. So let me show you the arguments here. So when I create new instance here, uh, whenever I call this method, it goes here, it creates arguments and saved 
and saves it in results fragment. And now since the arguments from questions fragment are in results fragment, you can get them here directly in arguments. And now I have in view created method when the view or when the results page gets created, I have the arguments and I have the list of answers that I personally chose. So let's show, let me show you in the app. So let's say I chose A here, then C, then maybe let's choose B next time and next and it shows A, C, B. So the chosen is in a list and I'm sending it and it's right here. Now all we have to do is first let's get uh, the questions from the service. So the API call. So let's create a list. So let's say that the questions are here. Let me import this. We have the questions here. I mean, this as well. Okay. Now we have to create a loop so that we can compare the answers from the server with the answers that we have or I have selected. So if the answers are matching, then score will be plus one. So that's how it'll work. So let's say for question and then th these questions will be from questions list one loop and then for again another loop. Uh, we can optimize it later, but let's just go with nested for loop for now. So it'll be string answer and it, this can be renamed to answers. Uh -huh. Now let's compare. So if answer dot equals the, the answer we chose equal to the one from question uh, from the server. So if both are equal, then we can create a variable here. Int score equals zero. Now what we can do is just to test, let's go with the toast first. Let's print score equals score. And then the total will be out of, it will be a list. So it should be questions list size. So it will be like, if there are three questions, then score could be, I mean, I'm assuming that one score for one question, but if you want right. me to change, I can change it later. Right, got it. Uh, just one question. Do you feel that this is the right place for uh, using like the line 50 when you are fetching the questions again from question service? Do you feel that is the right way to do this? That's actually a wrong way. I'm just going for the fastest way. Usually, right. Okay, so the best way would be as I've already fetched the data once from the server, I should just transfer it in the argument from questions fragment to results fragment. Right. But right. to save time, <laughs> you have given me 30 minutes, man. So just remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. <laughs> okay, let's run it now and let's see if it works. Yeah, I just wanted to bring it out upfront because there will be many viewers who are like, both of them do not know anything. They are just... <laughs> doing the time pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. In hackathons also, we don't care about the optimization. If it works, that's all we need. So the A, C and B. So let's, let's say I selected A, C and B. Oh, it shows three out of three. How is that possible? Let's see the, in the question service, the correct answer is A, A, A. So that means it is incorrect. So let me fix the bug again. There's these issues, you know, keep on popping up. So answer I'm comparing to question. So answer dot equals question dot answer and score plus plus. So basically you are missing the fact that um, for every question, you have to check the answer with only that particular index of question, right? Right now you, for every, like right now, each answer is being iterated over every question and you're trying to match if anyone is having option A and then you're giving full mark. <laughs> yeah, you, you are right. Uh, this is completely wrong on bullshit logic. So, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's 11.30 PM. So I'm sorry about. <laughs> right. Yeah, just, just to give an excuse. But now I have to make compare one index with the other. So let's just loop th through one. Uh, we don't have to make a nested loop at all. Right. So let's just for I questions dot size. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to get both here. 
so question let's fetch the question as well current question equals to question list dot get zero or oh, i get i actually here and then answer as well string answer equals to answers dot get zero and now we're just going to compare these two so index zero of both index one of both index two of both so this should definitely work i was <laughs> I, I don't know why i wrote that logic that's crazy of me yeah it does sometimes happen like when when you're writing code as well as you know talking sometimes it happens <laughs> So let's say B first, then A. I know all the answers are A, so the score should be one. That's what I'm trying for, and score is zero out of three. Again, wrong. So let's see what went wrong here. <laughs> line oh fifty-seven. Line fifty-seven. Answer dot get I. Oh, thank you, thank you. I mean, your eyes are fast. <laughs> Okay, attempt number three. I. <laughs> I mean, did you notice it before, or you just noticed after? No, I just noticed right now. Okay, so now score should be one. Yes, one Thanks. out of three. It's correct. So later on, what I can do is make this text view in the middle and print it there. But currently, the goal is fulfilled. That after the quiz, the score is being printed. That was the goal, and I achieved it in more than an hour. But Still close enough. That's fine, man. I uh, I just wanted to see like um, how comfortable you are with Android development. I can see that you have good knowledge of activities, fragments. You might be getting stuck in a place or two, but you are able to you know use Stack Overflow and Google to make progress in the right direction. So as far as that's happening, I can I I can say that yeah, like if you give Hanur chunk task which are planned and you tell the requirement upfront. And give appropriate time. Yeah, you can, you know, bring that out. So that's good. Thank you. So um, now we have two possible uh, ways to move forward. One is mm -hmm. that I have a list of already questions prepared. Like right now, we were having very random questions. So probably, and those are all related to Android. So one thing that we can definitely do, and because like it's already, you know, time crunch is there, and instead of fetching the, so I have the API also ready. But instead of calling the API and, you know, then I think in Android Java, you also have to add some serialization stuff, right? So it's not in a one line or two something. I, I think it might take a bit of time, right? Serial, there's a library called JSON. It can serialize like within seconds for us. So that library can help out, but I still have to test it. I have right. not a lot so of I, I'm thinking that JSON, instead of, in, uh, so basically, uh, I, I'm so question service right now is in a condition how it should have been present when you're writing tests. Like um, we have already mocked the response, but I, okay. I feel that uh, I can give you a proper list of around five questions, which will have appropriate titles and correct answers and options, right? So that mm -hmm. would be a fun note to end with. So yes. uh, we can end on that. But right now, I also want you to ask a few other questions. Like, what do you feel is the current limitation of this overall uh, design that we have? Sure. Uh, there are a lot of limitations. For So first of all, I want to ask a follow-up question. You mean UI limitation or like, as in, as in like backend limitation. So which side of uh, limitation you're talking about? So I'm talking about uh, a limited limitation from user point of view. Like if they want, if a user is coming to a quiz app and uh, what all can go wrong right now? Oh, can... there are a lot of things. For example, this results button is not ready. When you tap on start quiz, if you, if you select a, when I tap on next, it doesn't deselect automatically. Mm -hmm. I just have to, you know, call button dot deselect on next button. So a lot of, a lot of improvements are needed. And other than that, th this UI is bad, which is not in terms of implementation wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. Other things that we can improve on is um, that there's no back button here. If you want to go back right. to a question, there's no timer. You mentioned in the right. beginning that the timer was needed. I didn't add it yet because yeah. of time because of this time crunch yeah correct and uh, do you feel that um, the overall design is suitable enough to handle any kind of webs uh, any kind of response from our api i think uh, 
first of all, the API uh, service is not ready. This is just mock data. Exactly. It is hundred percent not ready. I have to, first of all, make a service and make sure it is not running on main thread. So there will be, you know, UI thread, whatever the code I'm writing here, it is already on UI thread, but right. uh, I will have to put it on a different service thread. I can create a service. I can create uh, like, what do you say in RX Java, we have RX utils to make mm -hmm. sure it is on different set, uh, subscribe. There are like a couple of ways to separate it out. So th that's what I will have to work on. Other than that, uh, once the, once the API fetch and get and get and post requests are ready in the API, it'll be good to go. So, right. And you mentioned RX Java, is that reactive Java? Yes. Just like that deals that, that that deals with like observables and all kind of things, right? Uh, where you look Correct. at everything as a stream of data. Yes, yes, that's right. Got it. All right. Yeah, but I don't think we kind of you know for a simple app we just to make one API call, uh, it, it it would be quite straightforward if we just you know run the service in a background thread and once we get the response and we process. But yeah, one for simple app, we don't have to go through. Just 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 background thread is enough for here. Right. So one question that I want to ask is like, what happens if, uh, if you will go to your question service dot Java file, you can see that options is an array, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what happens if in backend, we start getting five choices for some questions? Sure. Currently I haven't made my code or you can say customizable or maintainable. Right. Yeah. So, you know, code should be main, uh, maintenance, uh, or you can say, I don't know the term required term to say in software engineering, which, which measures how maintainable the, the right. project is. So for now, my project is not that maintainable. So I'll have to just add manually, uh, like, and it's an item here, like E, which is bad. I should have, uh, I should, I should have like a one one small change, which should lead that I can do it easily. Like I can make a variable, which should say that four options or five options, and that should be coming from backend and that will automatically change the UI. That should be the right approach for it. Right. So basically answer is already an array and it's coming from, uh, sorry, options is already an array. It's coming from the backend, right? Mm -hmm. So, so the ideal way that I was hoping is, uh, for your reserve, I mean, question fragment when they are, you know, displaying questions, they would probably iterate on each option. And then they, they have to manually create those radio buttons and add that to the radio flow, something like that. Yes. Yes. I'll be dynamically creating those buttons depending on how many they are. That'll be the yeah. best way to go. Yeah. Got it. Cool. This sounds good. I think we did cover a few things. Of course we have to add the API and all those kind of things. Other than that, um, what, what about unit testing like what what do you feel and i don't want you to start writing unit test cases of course the setup takes a lot of time but i just want to ask you what are the scenarios you feel are important which should be covered via unit testing sure let me write it down so uh, let's first talk about two kinds of unit tests uh, two kind of tests i can do so you mentioned just unit you uh, unit testing but uh, unit testing can be done in ui as well as in the backend service. So unit testing, uh, talking about the UI part, I can write some instrumentation tests, but those will be called, those will be called uh, UI tests rather than unit tests. I'm not okay. sure. Uh, so, so you mean unit tests just for, not for UI, right? You mean that? Yeah, not just UI, I, like as a quiz app, what do you feel are the test scenarios which you feel are important? It can be integration test as well. We don't have to get into that, but I just want to, you know, talk about how you think in terms of what are the tests which are important that we should check for, for a quiz app. Sure. So let's ignore the UI part for now. So I think most important will be the API call. You will be, you will be, you can do some of the test scenarios with the API call if you're getting, uh, getting the data correctly and you, you serializing it correctly. So if there is a parse issue or parsing issue, serializing issue, that could be one, one case, right. serialize the uh, test for serializing. Yeah. You can uh, zoom into the font, right? On this also. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then number two could be testing the APIs itself. Mm-hmm. 
with some mock data or you can just check if if for uh, if there are like four to five calls you can check uh, if you're getting the correct data for each and every call right um, and then next scenario could be um next scenario rest are like ui scenarios so yeah we can cover ui scenarios as well like for example so, what if the api returns success as false does the api uh, does the ui android app handles it yeah so they will be so in ui there are errors right 200 success so success is we all know we have already seen success is like you show the result in the end if yeah. there is a failure like failure as in 4 of 400 or as in 500 like if it is very common if it is like starting with 500 or something then that means it's a back end issue so right. we can give like internet connectivity error and we can show a pop up uh, whatever it is, it could be related to that. We can see how, uh, what kind of errors you want to throw. I'll just ask you first. Uh, yeah. And then 400 as in that it's my error, like in the, in, in the mobile app that I am either sending the wrong data, wrong API key, wrong, right. uh, wrong data sent to the API to retrieve right. data. So we can, we can show a message and you can tell me you being the product manager here, you can tell me. <laughs> Yeah, so for 400, I feel, uh, and I also have the API designed. So how I have designed it is basically if success parameter is false, you will also have a key error message and it will have some text that the user can see. Uh -huh. Because wow. 400 means we all, the backend already is intelligent enough to know what went wrong. And that's mm -hmm. something that backend should tell the user. Yep. I completely agree. I can totally display a pop-up message or a toast, whatever you right. want me to display on the UI, okay. depending on the error. Cool. Um, one other thing is if, if you can just open the app. Mm -hmm. So what, what do you feel? How would you handle uh, a scenario in which the question title is too long enough? So do you feel it can mess up the UI right now? Okay, so it can mess up because the text view is currently single line. I can easily fix it. So if I go to the UI for questions and I can make it multi-line. So I think I'll have to look up. So let's see in the attributes. I don't remember out of my mind what, what is there to make it multi-line. Multi input type, it should be an input type maybe text multi-line and then it should be false or true. So let's see what got input type text. Yeah, it's true now. So now there can be multi-line text into it. So okay. irrespective of how many lines we add, it will just make a paragraph right. out of it. And I have to increase the height so that right. I know that this much data I need to fill up so I can maybe increase the height to 200 dB, but you have to tell me how long the paragraph can be. Otherwise I cannot change. You have to give me the requirements. How long you think you're going to send me the data of question. Right, right, right. Yeah. Got it. Also, I think if it's long enough um, that it's still not fitting, we can probably, you know, add some trimming to it so that we add three dots. And if user clicks on it, we can probably, you know, have a pop-up message with the complete area and something like that. Because yeah, this I is can... something similar to how I have seen in the crossword app. Like if you will see the crossword app, when you select something below, you see the question for that. And if it's too long, you click on that and then it opens and pop up. Mm -hmm. So cool, sure. yeah, I, I, I think these were the scenarios which were important to discuss. Um, and I, I feel that the viewers also enjoyed like the whole journey of building an app and then having those follow-up discussions. Um, I've already shared the feedback with you. Uh, do you want to share anything? Uh, yep. Uh, I just want to let you guys know that I've been, <laughs> this follow-up interview was around midnight for me. So I'm like really sleepy. So I've like Rachid told me about my mistakes before I could even investigate because he's watching my every step. You don't think I'm a dumb programmer. I, I know my stuff. It's just that it takes a lot of practice to be here. <laughs> Exactly, man. And uh, as I'm saying, like, when you're already writing code, you know, when you're observing, it's very easy to find out mistakes, right? 
Okay. So when you're writing code as well as you are talking, it's I, I can totally understand how it feels, and it's not even similar to like the coding interviews, right? It was a real coding app, and these things happen. Even dumb things from this happen, and it happens with me all the time also. So don't feel like that. As I'm saying, like uh, I, I I can see that you are uh, working the right direction with enough experience and practice. I'm sure that you will be doing really well in your career. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, I hope this was fun. And um, if you want to check out the video in which Hanur interviews me, you can go definitely go to his channel. Also, he has a lot of cool videos, you know, uh, related to the universities in America. And he has been sharing his like the American life with us. So I, I really love his channel. He's doing great work. So also check that out. Thank you. Yeah, perfect. All right, man. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye.